Today's sermon is a bit of a challenge for us. We're going to look at John, and then we're also going to turn to another portion of Scripture. So just be with me when I say turn, okay? Okay? All right, we're going to have some, some learning and some education today. All right? That okay? All right, all right. I said we're going to have some learning and education, and I heard somebody say preach. <laughs> Black preachers are made fun of throughout the world because they say we have a lot of emotion but very little substance. And I disagree with that. Not because I'm black, but I disagree with it. Because people who were not able to read were able to hear what the Spirit of the Lord had to say to them, and they stood up and they proclaimed that truth and the people who were educated couldn't understand how did you get that. So they had to deny the authority of the preacher. But today I want to talk about I am the good shepherd. Today I'm going to talk about the sheep. Today I'm going to talk about the shepherd. But I'm also going to talk about the under shepherd. Is that okay? So I want to start with the shepherd first. Since Jesus said I am the good shepherd. Jesus didn't say, I am the hired shepherd. I am the part-time shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I'm there when you call. I'm there when you don't call. If you need me, I'm there. And if you don't need me, I'm there. Of course, you don't know where I am, but I'm still there. I am the good shepherd. I'm not the mean shepherd. I'm not the beating you shepherd. I don't desert you. I'm the good shepherd. How many of you can say that God has been good to you? Amen. God is the good shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. He had to let the Pharisees know, you have been here and you've been serving the people, but y'all haven't been good. Y'all have imposed uh, illegal actions on the people. You have charged them to come in and worship you. You have, you have accused them of doing wrong when they were doing right. You are not good shepherds, but God said, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. When you think about the good shepherd, you got to find out what is a good shepherd. We don't have shepherds too much in our city life, do we? We don't have shepherds because we city folk. But in the country, we'd have some shepherds. Now, Charlotte, you from the country, and you like country living. Charlotte got goats to come on her property, sheep to come on her property, and she just go out there and feed them. She don't run them off. She just take care of them. She like that. But some of us, if a sheep came on our property, we'd call 911, get that thing out of here. But... Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. What makes him so good? Is he good because he does whatever you want? Is he good because he answers your prayer? You see, God is good by relationship. He said, my sheep know me and I know them. That's relationship. Uh-oh, hold on. That's not a Sunday morning relationship. That's a relationship. It wouldn't work out. Many of us who are involved with a job, it wouldn't work out if we just showed up when we wanted to show up and stayed for a couple hours. That wouldn't work out because we got to have a relationship with our commitment. God is a relational God. My sheep know me and I know them. I know them and they know me. That's a relationship. And, and to put it in perspective, he said, just like the father knows me. What do you mean like the father knows you? Well, the father was always with the son, and the son was always with the father. They communicated day by day. They communicated at all times. There was never a time where there was a father and there wasn't a son. There was never a time where there wasn't a son and there wasn't a Holy Spirit. They were all three, all together in this thing. And God wants that same relationship with us. As his sheep, we'll be transactional say, God, I need you to do this for me. God, I want you to do that for me. God, that's transactional. A transaction is when you 
pay money and you get what you want. That's a transaction. God doesn't want us to give our offering and then say, okay, God, I gave. Now you give me something. Hello, somebody. Uh -huh. God doesn't even want us to say, well, you know, God, I can't give to you anything because you haven't blessed me the way I want you to bless me so I can't do nothing. Uh -uh. He wants a relationship. God is looking for the relationship just like with the Father. He's looking for that relationship with us. So on Monday, on Tuesday, when you lay down to go to sleep, when you wake up, uh, you know, when you wake up, he wants you to say, good morning, Father. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good because you woke me up this morning. God don't want you to be mad because he woke you up this morning, started you on your way. He don't want you to be, oh, man, I got to get up. No, he wants you to be glad. He wants you to be grateful to him because he wants the relationship. He's a good shepherd. He is. He doesn't always do it when you want him to do it. A good parent is not somebody who gives their child everything. I was talking about my, my living conditions when I was growing up, and I drove my family back to Marouge, Louisiana, that big city, Marouge. We have a flashing light in the middle of town, the big city. I drove to the end of the dirt road. And I said, that's where we used to live. My, my son got out the car. He was about six years old. And, and, and he got out the car and he said, all y'all lived in that house right there? I said, yeah. It was a front room and a back room. It was just a front room and a back room. The outhouse was over here. The chicken coop was right here. The pump was right here with the well. We had a front porch where the swing was. That's where we'd play. On the back porch, we sat out there and ate sugar cane when Uncle Johnny would cut it for us. I'm thinking about that house where I lived. My mom and my dad lived. My aunt and my uncle lived. Their children lived. And my other auntie named Beulah lived there too. We don't have names like Beulah anymore. We need to go back to Beulah. Angelina, I, th I think you should have a daughter named Beulah when you get married. And so we need to, to think about those old days because here I am looking at this house and my son said for the second time, oh, y'all lived in that house right there. I said, yeah, the morning glories had grown up. Now they're covering the tin roof. The tin roof had rusted, but it was still holding. And my son said for the third time, all of y'all lived in that little house right there. I said, yeah. He said, man, y'all must have been poor. But I didn't know it because we had all the love. We had all the kind. We went out to the garden and picked it. My, my aunt would go out there and wring a chicken's neck for me. I remember getting sweet potato pies. I remember all those good times that we had. We had the clothes that we needed. So I had everything that I needed, and I didn't even know what I wanted. God says, I'm the good shepherd. I don't always give you what you want, but I sure give you what you need. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. God says, I am the good shepherd. <laughs> now I need you to turn with me to Psalm 23. Because if we want to really find out what is a good shepherd, we got to look at somebody who was a shepherd. A good shepherd talking about somebody who was good to him. So I need you to go to Psalm 23. Can you go there? Are you there? Y'all taking too long. Psalm 23. This is what David says. And I'd like to read it in the, yeah, I want the King James. That, you got me, baby. You got me. Because the new version, it just, don't, it just don't get it for me. I lack nothing. No, I don't want that. I, I want I shall not want. Come on now. Hey, hey. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd, the king said, the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, wait a minute. Y'all ain't with y'all. You don't understand when you are a shepherd and you already know how to do what you're doing, you don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. 
all you can say is, I'm a good shepherd. But David said, no, and when you look at me, you might think I'm okay, but I want to tell you, somebody who is greater, somebody who is more, somebody who is magnificent, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means I don't want for nothing. I might not have what you think I should have, but I don't want for nothing. I might not be eating what you think I should be eating, but I got what I need. Yeah, yeah, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That means I didn't shepherd until he make you stop and lay down when he says so. He stops you in the middle of your activity. Help me, somebody. And he makes you lay down. How many of you got grandchildren? How many of you got children? How many of you know somebody who got children? Try telling a child it's time for you to take a nap. They fight, they hustle, they stress, they, they do everything not to take a nap because a child doesn't want to lay down. They don't want to lay down because they're afraid they might miss something. They want to go on and on and on. They want to see what's going on. We have one child uh, that I'm not going to tell you, uh, I'm not going to say your name, Michelle, but we have one child who when it was time for her to go to bed, she would always come in the room and give you a complaint. She would come in and say, uh, my, my foot hurts. Okay, baby, let me pray for you. Go back to bed. The next night, uh, my knee hurts. Uh, and, and this went on for months. Every night there was something that hurt. And one night she came into the room and I was so tired of her. I said, oh, Shay, what happens? What hurts now? Just tell me. What's hurt now? And she said, oh, 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 my feelings hurt. You see, when you tell a child to go to bed, they don't want to go to bed. And we as sheep, we don't want to lay down. We as sheep, we don't want to obey. We as sheep, we want to do what we want to do. But the good shepherd, I'm talking about the good shepherd. He makes you lay down. The good shepherd, he makes you lay down, not in a rough place, but in green pastures. That's what the good shepherd will do. He leads me beside the still waters. You see, sheep being as their nature, they're not aware that because their nose, their snout is made the way it is, if they get too close to the water, the water will rush up their snout and they will drown. They will drown standing up. If the water is rushing, if the water is bubbly, it will get into... But the good shepherd, the good shepherd... He takes you beside the still waters where the water is not rushing, where there is no movement of the water, but the water is clean, the water is good. That's why Jesus said, I am the living water. You drink from me. You'll never thirst again. But I'm going to take you to a place. I'm not going to take you to where you want to go. I'm not going to take you to where the action is. I'm going to take you to the still waters. And there you're going to get a drink from me. That's a good shepherd. That's the good shepherd. Y'all still with me? Then he said, he leads me, excuse me, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He don't lead me in the paths of the disco. Uh-oh, did I say that? I didn't mean to say that. He don't need lead me in places of hostility, in paths of righteousness, but not for me to be righteous, for his glory. All right, now, hold on. God leads you and me wherever he's leading us is only for his glory. If you're going into the valley, it's for his glory. If you're going up the mountain, it's for his glory. If you're on level land, it's for his glory. God leads us in paths of righteousness. So when we're in the valley, we ain't cussing. We ain't fussing. We're praising. We're giving him glory. We're exalting his name. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. You know when you get frustrated and it doesn't seem like it's going to work, you can say, but glory be to God. Janice said it this morning. Instead of being down, say, Lord, you're mighty. For his name's sake. For his name's sake. It's for his glory and not for your own. I'm talking about the good shepherd. I'm talking about the good shepherd. I'm talking about the good shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Lord, have mercy. I know what I'm going through. But I... 
It says, God, I don't have to fear because the good shepherd is with me. The analogy of the uh, valley of the shadow of death is a real analogy in Israel. In Israel, there is a particular place called the valley of the shadow of death. It's trees that have uh, grown together and they, they close out all the light of the sun. So what the shepherd does is he allows the sheep to go there, but first he sends somebody through first the valley. Because inside that valley, there are wild animals. There's lions and tigers and bears. And so they're in there ready to get the sheep and make prey. You know, so he sends somebody in there. I'm going somewhere with this. He sends somebody in there first. When the shepherd goes through, the, uh, the, the under shepherd, when he goes through that valley, he stands on the other end. The shepherd, the big shepherd, is holding back the sheep. Y'all still with me? Y'all still with me? I'm trying to teach you something. He's holding back the sheep. They want to go. He says, no, you can't go yet because it's not safe. But I want to go. I know I can go through there. I've been through here before. No, no, no. There's something that you can't see, but I'm aware of. And I don't want you to go in there because you might have a, a something to happen to you. I, I want to keep you safe. I want to keep you well. I want to keep you alive. And then all of a sudden, when the big, when the smaller shepherd gets down to the end, he takes his rod and he takes the staff and he starts clanging them together. The sheep hear the noise and they say, it must be safe. I can go now. And the other shepherd comes on with them and they come on together. Somebody praying with me this morning because God has kept you. God has helped you in many different circumstances. You wanted to go, but God said, no, not yet. God sent Jesus first. And when Jesus went through it, now you can go through the valley of the shadow of death and you can fear no evil because he's with you. He corrects you when you're wrong and strengthens you when you're right. Somebody say thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I don't like to eat with people who don't like me. I don't like to do it. I'm scared they might put some sugar Avery, some another in my I, I, I don't want to do that. Uh -uh. But, he, but God is the good shepherd. See because he's your protector what he does is, he says, I'm going to show you how much I'm going to protect you. I'm going to prepare a place for you to sit. I'm going to fill that table with all the provisions that you desire, but it's going to be in front of your enemies, and they're not going to touch you. They can't come near you. But if they do come because they're hungry, you feed them. If they do come, because they have a need, you supply it. Ain't that a good God? That's a good shepherd. He wants to make sure I'm taking care of you, but I'm taking care of you so you can take care of somebody else. I don't care how you feel about them. I want you to know I love them and I care about them, so you give them what I'm giving you. You know, in my head with oil. And my cup runs over. I ain't got no needs. I got more than enough. Lord, it's just running over. But the anointing of the head with oil is very, very important. You see, we read these scriptures, we, we get into to the poetry of it, but we forget the significance. We got to go back to Israel and find out what was the significance of anointing a sheep's head with oil. Then in Israel, there's something called the blowfly. And the blowfly will come and lay eggs in the eyes of the sheep. And he will also lay eggs in the neck of the sheep. He'll get into that crease and he'll lay the eggs in that crease. The eggs will begin to eat and disease the sheep. And a diseased sheep will eventually die unless he has an ointment. A little bitty sin was creeping in your eye. You didn't know that little bitty creepy sin was getting into your neck, into the crease, and it was eating away at your soul. But God, the good shepherd, anoints your head with oil. <laughs> surely. Surely. Not surely, surely. Goodness and mercy. Why? Because I got the good shepherd. 
Surely, goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy. Not one, but both of them. They're going to follow me. They're going to come behind me all the days of my life. Not only that, but because I got a good shepherd, one who watches out for me. Yeah, I will dwell. Y'all ain't praying with me. I will, I'm not going for a visit. I'm not doing a summer vacation. I will dwell in the house of the Lord where everything is taken care of. I'm not talking about my mansion. I'm talking about before I get to my mansion. I'm in his house. I'm not talking about when I die and go to glory. I'm talking about while I'm living. The good shepherd. <laughs> He'll take care of it. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. Brother David, you mentioned this morning and I tried to stall till you got back. No, just kidding. You mentioned that morning when you came up to my office and I want to talk about the under shepherd just a little bit. Uh, the under shepherd is, well, first of all, let me tell you what the word shepherd means. The, the word shepherd means pastor. Shepherd is how we got the word pastor. We got the word pastor. It means to lead, to set to grazing, to cause to eat. That's what it means. In the Old Testament, it's from the Hebrew word roye. And that's a name that God uses for himself. It means to pastor. It's used 173 times in the Old Testament. It's used 144 times in the New Testament. Pastor. Pastor. Now this is where it's going to get sticky. We could rejoice when we say the Lord is my shepherd. Oh, but pastor, I don't want you to be over me. In Jeremiah 23, the Lord says this, Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah, tw Jeremiah 23, verse 4, and I, God, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. The under shepherd is not a sheep. I, I got to let that soak in. He's kind of schizophrenic because, in a sense, he is a sheep because he's the servant of the Lord. But he's not a sheep. The under-shepherd has a commission by God that he has to follow. The under-shepherd is not, it can't be a hireling, and as it was said before, he can't be a thief or a robber. And we got to watch out because there's all kind of TV preachers that are trying to steal God's flock. All kind of TV preachers who are trying to rob God's flock. There's all kinds of uh, evangelists who are out here trying to make a buck off the sheep. But God's people, God's shepherd, it's not like that. He has to follow the example of the sheep. He has to lead, he has to feed, and he has to be with the sheep. He has to lead. Don't you be leading me. Don't tell me what I, don't tell me what I don't want to hear. Brother David, when you made that, I was so glad you did. I need that illustration. And I, I, I accept your apology 100%. I want you to know that. I accepted it a long time ago, but I want you to know today that I accept it. But I remember that day when you came to my office and you said, I wrote this song. It was a good song. It really was. And I said to you, why don't you join the youth choir? <laughs> we were standing in front of my office in the hallway. I remember it. <laughs> you think I don't remember? Just because I got this little gray right here? No, I remember. <laughs> I remember more than you think. <laughs> and you got highly insulted. Because many times we expect for the under shepherd to receive what we have and then to do what we want. But that's not the way the Lord works. See, what you didn't know and what a lot of other people don't know is 
I had been praying, God, this youth choir needs some help. And this youth choir needs some creativity that we don't have in the youth choir right now. So when I saw what you were doing, I wanted you to go to the youth choir, not for your good, but for their good. Many times what God will do is God will answer a prayer or God will speak to the under shepherd before you even know it. And God will already position you to do what God wants you to do. But if you pout over the under shepherd, if you get mad at the under shepherd, I'm going to another church. Guess what? God's going to hold you back there too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's sensitive right there. Because I just believe that God wants me to do whatever I want to do. And he told me to do it so I can do it. No, God has an order. And the under shepherd is not just a position. It's a pastor to be over the sheep. He said, my sheep know my voice. He said, I know my sheep and they know me. That means you don't know who his sheep is. God says, I know my sheep, but you don't. Uh-oh. Uh oh. So many times you could be upset with the pastor because he's not doing something for a sheep that you assume, but that sheep might be a wolf in, wolf in sheep's clothing. That sheep might be a goat. You don't know what's going on there. So you got to listen to the under shepherd as he gives you guidance and as he's trying to tell you, hey, this is what God is telling me. My brothers, they live across the street from a shepherd. And the sheep get out from the pen sometime. When the sheep get out, they follow the big sheep. They follow that big sheep. And they go on wherever he say. They're not aware that cars are coming down the street. Big trucks are rolling down the road. They're not aware that uh, there's a ditch right there that they could fall in and can't get out. But the shepherd, he comes. And when the shepherd comes... He has to run in front of all those sheep. They've been out for five minutes. They stop here and nibble a little bit. They run over here and nibble a little bit. They go across the road. They tie up traffic. They're doing all these dangerous things. But the shepherd has to get in front of the big sheep. He has to get in And all he has is a, a little staff. It's not a big staff. It's not a heavy staff. It's just a little stick. And, he, and he's waving it. He's waving it to get that big sheep's attention. Somebody praying with me. I know you're praying with me. Somebody even praying for me. But as he gets their attention, he says, no, it's time to go back. It's time to turn around and go. He doesn't take that stick and he doesn't beat the sheep. He doesn't hit them upside the head. He doesn't poke them. He just waves it. He waves it as the authority. He says, wait a minute now. I'm in control of this group right here. He's letting the traffic know I'm in control of this. He's letting the truck drivers know I'm in control. You try to take it over yourself you're gonna end up with a mess and he gently guides them back to where they're supposed to go and and you got one or two who always try to get out of the way they try to go this way they try to go that now I'm not talking about y'all please don't think I'm talking about y'all but I have been in a situation just this weekend where I've heard under shepherds complain about how they are trying to guide their congregation. And I said, praise God, we don't have that problem at Crossroads. We don't have those kinds of sheep. Thank God that he gave me obedient sheep, sheep that know how to pray, sheep that know how to praise, sheep that know how to stand up, sheep that know how to uh, kneel down and, and submit their will to God. And as I was saying this, they looked at me like, what kind of pastor are you in? I'm only where God planted me. I'm only where God planted me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I want you to know that all under shepherds are just like me. They are where God has planted them. And God has given them the sheep that he wants them to have. That's the under shepherd. This is what um, Augustine, Augustine was an uh, African bishop. He was the first African bishop. And this is what he said. He was in the he was in the order of the apostles, not a bishop in the Catholic Church, per se, an order of the apostles. He says, this is a pastor's job. Are you ready? Disturbers are to be rebuked. What? You can't tell me what to do. God gave me a mouth, and I got to use it. The lost spirit, the low spirited should be encouraged. The infirm must be supported. 
Objectors must be refuted. The treacherous must be guarded against. The unskilled must be taught. The lazy must be aroused. The contentious must be restrained. The haughty must be repressed. Litigants must be pacified. The best must be liberated. The good approved. The evil dis, uh, disobeyed. And all others are just to be loved. That's a powerful list, isn't it? That's a powerful list. And we fall short of being the shepherds that God calls us to be when we try to be obedient to the flock instead of leading the flock. We try to preach what you say preach. Teach what you say teach. You bring the pastor a sermon. Say, pastor, if you want to be a successful preacher, here's a sermon. That I printed it out. I got it on Google. This is what you need to preach. And, 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 and you say, well, that's, that, that looks pretty good, but that's not for my flock. <laughs> you don't know what he's talking about. I've never seen sheep try to lead the shepherd. I've never seen it. If you've seen it, let me know. I've never seen it. But when we talk about God's order and he is the good shepherd, what God has given every one of us is he's given us an under shepherd to be in place in his stead. I mentioned that there are 2.5 million people in the Congo church. One pastor can't do it all. And Jesus Christ, as I said last Sunday, did not die so that the mission would die. His mission is to live over and over and over through us and to us. Amen? Amen. Well, clap your hands. I'm going to go on and talk about the sheep now. All right. All right, yeah, I figured that. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about just the sheep just a little bit. When I talk about the sheep, Jesus says, my sheep know me. My sheep know me. My sheep know me. They won't listen to another's voice. They'll listen to me. Real briefly, I'll tell you this, this quick story. I was in King heard it, and we went to Cameroon. In Cameroon, there was a ton of sheep. It was almost a thousand, maybe more. They were all around one pool of water. It was payday. The shepherds go in to get their pay. They line their staffs up on the walkway because they don't carry their staffs in with the payday. When the shepherds come out, I wondered how did they know their own staff? Because all the staffs look alike to me. And there was a whole bunch of staffs. There's a bunch of them. And it was explained to me that they know their staff by the feel of the grip. That they've worked with it so long until their hand knows that's mine. If they grab somebody's that's not theirs, they know. But then they got their pay. They got their staff, and they went over to the pool. Now, sheep are flocking animals. They like to be in groups. Just stay with me a minute. I'm almost done. And <clears throat> one of the shepherds did like this. That's all, just. And his sheep backed up from the pool and followed him. Another shepherd, he came out and they're still there just drinking. He went. Those sheep backed up. They followed him. Another sheep, another shepherd, he came out. He went. His sheep backed up. And followed him. I watched as shepherd after shepherd came out and made a sound. And what they told me is sheep have sensitive ears. Voice. Whatever they're doing, when they hear their shepherd's voice. I don't care if they're in a flock of 100 or 1,000. When they hear their shepherd's voice. 
They know immediately, stop what I'm doing. My shepherd is calling. He's beckoning me. Let me back up from this situation. Let me turn my attention to my shepherd and let me follow him because I know his voice. But the voice of the stranger, I will not follow. I don't know that voice. So I won't follow that voice. I'm not going with him. I'm not going in that direction. But the way that the sheep know the shepherd's voice is they're in constant communication. It's not just once a week. It's not just when you're in trouble. It's like there's constant communication. They're always listening for the sheep, for the shepherd. Hold on. Even when they're walking, they're listening for the sounds of the shepherd. Because they know as I walk, I got to listen to the leadership of my shepherd. And the great shepherd of the sheep, as he's making noises, as he's uttering, they're listening for his voice so they could know every detail of the inflection in his voice. But a stranger, they won't follow. So I thought, well, I kind of sound like that guy over there. Let me go try it. So I got the staff, and I said, I just want to try it. And they sat back, and they laughed at me. They had a good laugh. And so I, I made the sound. The sheep ran. <laughs> they ran away from me. Y'all don't understand. They hurried up and ran away from me. They got a distance, turned around, and looked at me like, you ain't my shepherd. What would it be like? If God, what would it be like? When we hear the voice of something talking to us and we say, that's not my shepherd. Let me get away from you. You are not the voice that calms me. You are not the voice that soothes me. You are not the voice that gives me comfort. You are not the voice that loves me. You're not the voice of compassion. You're not the voice of love. Let me leave you as soon as I can and then turn around and look at you like you crazy. What would it be like? What would it be like if the people of God, those who submit their will to him, those who walk around the church, hollering, Lord, you're mighty. When the enemy comes in with fear, when the enemy comes in with doubt, when the enemy comes in with confusion, what would it be like if the people of God said, that's not my master's voice. That's not the good shepherd. I don't know what kind of shepherd you are, but you're not my shepherd. I've never heard your voice. You didn't redeem me. You didn't die for me. You didn't rise from the dead for me. I'm going to run away from you as quick quickly as I can. I'm going to turn around and look at you like you crazy. Who you think you talking to? Oh, but what would it be like? Can you just imagine? What it would be like if God's people, you and me, brothers and sisters, if God's people who kneel in prayer, if God's people who stand in faith, God's people who proclaim victory, when they hear God's voice, they say, here I am, Lord. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Here I am, God. Do what you want. I'm obedient to you. God, I'm available to you. What would it be like if we were available to the Lord? What would it be like if when he spoke to us, we heard his voice and we didn't have a doubt and didn't say, I think that, no, I know, I know it's God. I know his voice. I know he spoke to me in denial. I know what he told me to do and I'm going to get busy doing it. Somebody clap your hands and give God praise. Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Not I might be. I am the good shepherd. Not I want to be. I am the good shepherd. Not I will become. <laughs> I am the good shepherd. I'm going to try that again. Because I don't think y'all hearing me. I think y'all got tired. Y'all got tired. He said, Lord, this man, he up here trying to teach and preach. And I'm just, I'm just too tired for that today. I know he had a long flight, but I'm tired than he is. Uh, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Jesus said, I'm not, not that I will be, not that I might be. I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. 
when your times is low. I am the good shepherd when you don't know which direction to go. I am the good shepherd when you need to pray. I am the good shepherd when you need to rest. I am the good shepherd when you don't want to praise me. I am the good shepherd who prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I am the good shepherd who anoints you with the oil of my Holy Spirit, rubs your head down so that your cup runs over. I am the good shepherd worthy of your praise I am the good shepherd worthy of your hallelujahs I am the good shepherd worthy of your obedience and because I'm the good shepherd when you hear my voice you will come to me you'll avoid the stranger and you'll run to me amen let's give God a great big hand praise <laughs>